Hey guys, Eric with Retro Rides. We're picking up another project car. Uh, we scheduled this guy in here a while back and uh, time has come. Luckily, we got a nice day to do it. And uh, stay tuned, you'll see what it is shortly. Bad timing is everything. I guess it's their rig. Pull the winch out too, Matt. Just pull it out of your ways. Okay. Right, let's, let's, go, uh, let's go check it out. Hey, we're out here in Sisters. About to pick up the 67 Camaro. This thing is a time capsule. Looks good. Bodywork's been gone through. He's got quite the stack of parts. Just needs that little extra help to get it running. Come with us. We'll show you. It'll be good. We're out here in Sisters, and today we're rescuing this Camaro. So the Camaro's been sitting a long time. Uh, Neil here has been caretaker and his mother and father-in-law owned it since brand new, which is pretty rare anymore on these Camaros. Uh, as you can see, it's had a lot of work done to it already. And uh, Neil will kind of explain what's been done to it and where we left off and where we're going with it. So Neil, uh, how long has it been sitting in here? It's got the, oh, gosh, the barn it's... dust everybody's after. So the market crashed in 2008. And it has been here ever since, sitting. <laughs> Try to justify spending money on a hot rod right. in 2009 <laughs> yeah. with your wife. So the so, time has come, we're finally yes. dragging her back out. So Yeah, my wife Kimberly used to ride in between the bucket seats when she was a kid in this <laughs> car. That's pretty awesome. Before the seat belts was a regulation. Yeah, I don't even think they required them until yeah. 68 or something like that. But so. A lot of stuff's been done to it. So, what, yeah. what color was the car originally? Was it? It was. It was like a. Uh, well, the original color was. Uh, what was it? Azure gold, Carol. So this a, car came out of Anchorage, huh? Well, we ordered it from there, gotcha. and then we got out of the service in the spring. We went back to our hometown, Port Angeles, mm -hmm. and it was delivered by train to Renton. Yeah. Uh, and we went over there and picked it up. That had been pretty exciting. Yeah, it was. So after I picked up the car, um, we just took all the garbage out of it, got it cleaned up, took it down to Springfield and had it acid dipped. They completely disassembled the entire uh, car. Kind of comes back galvanized like a garbage can. Yeah, kind of a strange there. deal. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. the same ones that we use as well. So yeah. you guys know Metalworks. And then I worked with Detroit Speed and Engineering and um, uh, Frank Beck out of uh, Arizona for the engine. Detroit Speed and Engineering was super helpful in, in getting this car. Yeah, they're great. Uh, put they, together. They build uh, some nice stuff for this. And it looks like you got a mini tub kit in here. Yep. And a four link conversion. That was all from Detroit Speed and Engineering. And, and my buddy, uh, Bill Van Boyen, uh, did all the installation on that. He was a uh, welder and an engineer on a tugboat. So he had uh, s uh, spool fed welders and he was just an awesome uh, mechanic. Did he do the cage work and stuff? He, he did well? the cage, he did the mini tubs, he, he installed the rear end. Um, he just did a beautiful job and uh, got it all sprayed down with the Zolotone, I think it is. And, yeah. Uh, he there. did the sun frame uh, connectors, got that all welded in, and uh, you can see what a beautiful job he did. He installed all the subframe connectors, and and uh, there's a Quadralink uh, suspension system that he also uh, installed. Six yeah, it's, it's a TKO uh, uh, five-speed okay. uh, Tremec. Yeah, great. And uh, Bill Van Boyne also installed that. Yeah. Uh, we worked together on it, but uh, he did all the welding and I just followed instructions. Uh, what color is this? It's a house of color, right? So. Yeah, house of color and I believe it's uh, azure gold. Nice. Yeah, and there's also a, a cross member that snaps into place if you oh, decide you want to use that. Yep, yeah, a tie bar in there. Yeah. So, and I was planning on having the roll bar uh, upholstered okay. uh, yeah. in the spots where people could yeah, hit their head or it. something. Very cool. Yeah, looks like you got the Mickey Thompsons on there. Those are cool yep. tires. And then uh, Jim Meyer Racing did the front end clip. Okay, and they're out of Lincoln City. Yeah, Lincoln City. So 
and uh, what are the, those are based on the uh, Mustang II. Right. I yeah. think, yeah. yeah. So it, it, it dynoed out at uh, 636 horsepower. Holy smokes, that's a lot for a small buck. Yeah. Naturally aspirated. and Of course, that's, that's one of the things that uh, got lost in the shuffle. It's been through several different garages and mm -hmm. whatnot, and uh, the dyno sheet. No. How can you lose a dyno sheet? But we managed to do it. Numbers. But I've got all the, yeah, the engine specs in the uh, manual over there for the motor. Demon carb. Are you wanting to keep it uh, just natural aspirate carburetor? Or you want to do a fuel injection or what's your, I, I think, just kind of keep it the way that. Yeah, I think yeah. I'll stick with that uh, uh -huh. demon carburation, yeah, carburetor. Yeah, pretty well. You got piles of parts laying out here. Too, yeah. So. Yeah, you know, it looks like yeah. I got the hidden headlight assemblies are already in there. Yeah, I had a bad habit of uh, laying in bed at night with hot rod magazines. Uh huh. Uh, ordering parts on the internet. <laughs> you yep. know, when the Guilty. internet came out, it's just. Yeah. But, you it's know, I still I still have the parts, so I'm glad that I plugged away at it. And, yeah. Looks like you yeah. might have a rear panar bar there. So is the rear of the car kind of float around in there right now, or? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. They they had taken that uh, cross member out for the, so that's a Detroit Speed and Engineering Quadrilink uh -huh. uh, suspension system. And they were trying to ensure that the uh, frame was squared up. Gotcha. And so they took some of the components out uh, in the process of figuring that out. So gotcha. uh, the suspension, some of the suspension pieces, and I think the uh, connector bar that okay. goes on the underside. Mm -hmm. uh, Go through all that has stuff. Has been taken so. off, yeah. yeah. Um, do you have a different column? Are you wanting to run this? Are you putting a tilt well, column in it, I assume? I'm, I'm going to let you, you guys will probably use this to move the car around and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah but eventually I want to I want to get a different steering column that yeah. uh, would be chrome. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably go yeah. that route, like an I did it or something. They're all GM yeah. based anyway, but then you get your tilt and all that, and get the yeah. right length to work with the steering rack and all that. Right. Otherwise, yeah, we gotta kind of. I think that's that a new linkage. I'm not positive on yeah, that. Yeah, this but, one it looks like. But it. I think that was a piece to the chrome column that uh, disappeared. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, it's got the right end there, three quarter, and this is the right power rack side, so. Um, maybe they had something similar. They do, yeah. they do offer a direct fit column for these cars okay. as well. Okay. So yeah, one way or yeah. another and yeah. got bumpers, grill. Yep. Big old radiator. Rotating, uh, headlight components and nice. this, uh, radiator, uh, I gave you the information in the paperwork on the guy uh -huh. who builds these radiators, but it's, it's rated up to 900 horsepower, I believe. Nice. Uh, cause I've seen so many hot rods overheating on the roadside on the way to a show yeah, <laughs> or trying to leave a show. Yeah. So I wanted to have a really good radiator so we didn't run into that issue. Yeah, piles of paperwork, just a bunch of parts. Yeah, and the, uh, so I was really happy because you were curious about the cam and, uh -huh. and the heads and stuff like that. I I came across that paperwork and oh, that's perfect. found the cam specs. And oh, yeah. So, and the, and the information on the heads and the block and all that stuff is in there. Yeah, quite a bit of lift on there too. So, Is that, does that sound like a decent yeah, cam? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. And so then yeah, I, I think I had Frank Beck's uh, build. Did you plan on running this garden hose for a fuel line? That's <laughs> that's what was actually recommended. Yeah. He was pretty insistent that it was going to need that uh, return line and. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Dash ten stuff and half inch line. Oh, here we That'll go. That'll do it. Yeah, so Frank Beck calls the engine a 434 street kill. So the the he guarantees up to 602 horsepower, but this one dynoed out at 636. So oh, uh, nice. it did really well. 91 octane fuel. Yep. So very cool. So on the seats here, um, obviously they're all factory now. You want to retain that factory look, or you want to go with a bolstered look, or you? Updating I'm kind of looking for the factory look, uh -huh. but instead of vinyl, uh -huh. uh, use leather. Okay. Yep. And of course, uh, the frames are all still good, but you can see that varmints have had their way with yeah, that's parts pretty... of the underside and stuff like that. So I'm hoping to get them restuffed. Yeah, pretty normal stuff. Uh, but, yeah. We can. Uh, so there's a couple options you can do too, because we do a fair amount of these. Is you can do a factory flat back and bottom like that, or you can add some. It's got a little shape to it. You know, it kind of holds you in the seat, newer foam style um, with the older style layout. And I mean, right. there's a million different ways to do it for sure, but. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always interested in ideas. Okay. Uh, and, uh, 
What else we got back here? You got old pedal assemblies, it looks like. And yep, we've got all the original parts. Fender, inner fender brackets here. Looks like a dash pad. Got some of the painted parts here. All the trim pieces are underneath there, and then the, the old uh, uh, headlamps and tail lights, and I have all those components as well. And as far as trim work and all that stuff goes, case by case, you want to replace them or you want to reuse them or what's your... I'm, I'm going to leave that up to you. If okay. it looks, if it's looking like a polished, um, I don't want to use that word, <laughs> uh, I'd yep. rather have it replaced. Cool. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Window trim and stuff like that, if it's in good shape, you already have it on there and everything, then we'll just leave it alone. And we prefer original stainless anyway. We can, mm -hmm. we can straighten and polish it if it needs to be, but... Um, some of the aluminum stuff that we have there, sometimes it's just easier to get new stuff. So find the best of both worlds there, but we'll uh, start loading stuff in, get the car in, and uh, yeah, bring it yeah. back to the shop and start bringing it down. This will be a fun Yeah, one. I really appreciate you guys coming out and picking the car up too, because I, I have not uh, had that service before. I've always had to provide transportation and drop off and pick up, and yeah, so that was kind of, that was very nice. Yeah, pain for sure, but yeah, it's happy to see it get out of here and... And back on the road, and you guys can all drive it together here and take her for a rip yeah. that thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a little more horsepower than it did before, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and even even with the original uh, uh, 327 engine that it came with, mm -hmm. those cars are so light. Yeah. Uh, it was really squirrely on the road. Was so that I'm hoping with before? the. It was, it's always been a manual. Oh. Um, uh, That's a great But I'm hoping though. with the new suspension and, and stuff that it'll be a little better. Uh, yeah, the coil will A little better, a little nice. less squirrely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. You got more more tire on the ground too, so it'll be a whole nother animal. That is for sure. Yeah, this yeah. this is really exciting to see this car finally getting loaded up and on its way to getting finished. It's been sitting in my garage since 2009. We all know what happened in 2008. Uh, not very many people were spending money on building hot rods, so it's just it's a really happy day for me to see this project on its way to completion. <laughs>
them back just a little bit, Matt. Hey, it's Matt with Retro Rides. We're gonna skip ahead a couple of days. Here we are. The Camaro that we picked up here last week is now in the shop. We've got it on the lift. Um, you saw when we were going through it and when we were picking it up, there's a lot of stuff. A ton of stuff, ton of parts, ton of good parts. The next biggest step is we gotta figure out what all we got. Cause we need to know what we have, what we don't, and everything in between. So I'm going through it right now, kind of pulling all the boxes out, pulling all the papers out. Uh, we're just documenting everything. We want to know what we have. We want to make sure nothing goes missing. Uh, so we just want to make sure uh, everything is here. Everything that he gave us is here. That's our goal. So um, we have our check-in for any new cars that I'm going through. Uh, I take a picture of everything that is in the car just so we know what came with it. Um, and then usually some kind of note I'll try to write down on a list. That way we can have a quick access guide to see what we got. Um, we got a lot of the stuff taken out of the vehicle. It's now in one of our uh, shelves that we're actually gonna put in storage because we're not really gonna get to it immediately, but we wanna know where it's at and where we can get it if we need it. So step one is just creating an inventory and. Uh, so one of the biggest things that we run into is not all parts are big. Um, sometimes we're going to get down to literally the bolts, nuts, hardware of it all. And again, we just want pictures of everything. We want to know where it's at. We want to know what it's for. Um, this is just a good way to kind of have a good starting point so you know exactly what to do in the future. So that's what we're doing right now. We're getting pictures, good lighting, documenting, and uh, hopefully when we need it, we'll find it. Um, this one, dare I say it, this one's gonna be quite a long process. Um, the parts that we have for this car are numerous. We filled more or less the cabin uh, before we loaded it into the trailer. The trunk was full. Um, I know there's a couple of bins that we also put in. You saw it in the trailer. You saw all the seats. You saw all the trim packages. Um, I'm going to get everything out of the car and into our shelves. When we go to move the shelves into the unit, um, I'm going to go through the rest of the boxes, the rest of the trim. Um, man, we almost have, I mean, it's all one car, but you, you, it feels like we got a couple of cars worth of parts here. Um, but yeah, the documentation on this one's gonna be a little bit extensive just because we do have quite a, quite a few parts, but we'll get it done, we'll get it, we'll get it. It'll be good. earlier when we got all the parts out of here and inventoried. Uh, next step, we had to get everything off the front. Um, we needed better access to the front suspension, needed better access to the engine. Um, all the panels fit, so we know we were good with that. Um, they have gone into storage because obviously they're all painted and finished, so we want a nice safe spot for that. Uh, but now it's time to dive into the meat and potatoes of this get the engine sorted, get the suspension sorted, and then once we're rocking and rolling with that, then we can start throwing parts back on. But for now, this will probably be how it sits for a while and stick with us to see more. 